The Gospels are full of contradictions and we don't even know who wrote them in the first place, so clearly they cannot be trusted. Chances are you've heard these two arguments or even made them yourself, which is why we're about to debunk them in this video. First, yes, the Gospels were written anonymously. Nowhere does Matthew, Mark, Luke or John say that they actually wrote the Gospels which have come to bear their name. Some skeptics jump on that and claim that anyone really could have written the Gospels, possibly even people who lived long after them. However, it's important to know that the Gospels are certainly not the only ancient documents whose authors didn't identify themselves. Just as an example, consider a work called The Annals, by far the most important source from which contemporary historians get their information about the Roman Empire during the first century. This key text is attributed to Tacitus, a Roman senator and historian who lived at the time and yet nowhere in the Annals did Tacitus identify himself as the author. Even so, no one questions Tacitus' authorship as it it's clearly supported by external evidence, such as other texts from the same period which make reference to the annals and consistently mention Tacitus as its author. The very same thing applies in the case of the Gospels. The Church Fathers referenced them copiously and consistently attributed them to the four traditionally accepted authors. In fact, there is not a single instance known to us when a canonical Gospel is attributed to anyone other than Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Thus, we have every reason reason to ascribe the Gospels to these four, so the burden of proof is on the skeptics to offer us a more plausible option. The second problem that's often brought up is the fact that there are differences in the Gospel accounts. For example, Matthew tells us that Jesus healed two blind men as he was leaving Jericho, whereas Luke wrote that Jesus healed one blind man as he was entering Jericho. Mark agrees with Matthew about the fact that Jesus was leaving Jericho, but like Luke he features only one blind man. How can that be? In other instances, the Gospels seem to differ about the chronological order of things or one Gospel may mention stuff which others don't. On the surface, this seems like a real problem, but as we're about to see, these differences actually support rather than undermine the reliability of the Gospels. Imagine an architect, a sound engineer, a carpenter and a violinist attending a concert together. Imagine that you interviewed them one by one about their experience. Clearly, their reports would differ and some of the differences might actually be rather significant. The sound engineer is likely to talk about things the carpenter doesn't even know of. The violinist will mention details no one else was even able to hear, but be completely silent instead about the aesthetics of the concert hall which the architect highlights. Besides, it's also quite probable that each one will have his or her order of recounting things. While one person may start by jumping right to their favorite song of the concert, another person might go through things in a strict chronological order, starting from when they walked into the concert hall and ending with how they walked out of there again. Now in contrast to all that, imagine instead that all of their reports agreed word for word. Wouldn't that be fishy? The thing is that eyewitness testimonies about one and the same event differ from one another, and that's just natural. In fact, detectives or judges who routinely deal with eyewitness accounts actually expect such differences. In contrast, if a detective or a judge listening to let's say four eyewitnesses gets to hear four exactly identical stories, they would immediately suspect collusion and thus question the authenticity of the accounts. For the same reason, historians too expect eyewitness accounts from the past to differ from one another. Therefore, the fact that the Gospels don't agree on every single detail speaks for and not against them. Now let's get to the healing of the blind man in Jericho. It's important to know that in Jesus' time there were actually two Jerichos, the old town of Jericho, which is the one known from Old Testament times, as well as a new Jericho, which was built by Herod the Great around one mile south of the old one. Thus, a plausible explanation is that the healing happened in between the two Jerichos, as Jesus was leaving one of them, which is what Matthew and Mark say, while he was heading for the other one, as Luke recounts. And as far as the number of blind men is concerned, Mark and Luke don't say that there was one man only, which leaves the option of there being more than one. Also note that in Matthew the men are not named, whereas Mark mentions Bartimaeus, one of the blind beggars by name. Thus, it could be that Mark actually knew 
about Bartimaeus personally, which is why he chose to focus the narration of the healing on him only, even though he was perfectly aware that the second person was present. Bartimaeus could also have been the one of the two blind men who led the conversation with Jesus, which is why Mark and Luke honed in on him, without however explicitly denying that a second blind man got healed too. So clearly, neither the differences between the Gospels nor their anonymity really pose a problem for their reliability. Another issue skeptics often bring up is that neither Jesus nor the Apostle Paul ever taught that God is a trinity, but that this idea is a later pagan invention. If you want to find out why this is wrong and why the New Testament clearly implies that God is triune, check out this video over here. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.